All right, so let's jump into it. Today is the first day. Peace and blessings, everybody. It's me, Sun Man Patu. Today is the first day of Kartik or Damodar. It's a very, very holy month. As a matter of fact, it's the most holy month. In this month, we honor Lord Krishna by lighting a candle to him every day, whether it's a ghee lamp or a regular candle, whatever source of light you can provide. We usually offer that light to one of his pictures. So, like, I'm going to show you, like, a simple, this is not a real altar. This is just something that I set up real quick so that I can make offerings to Lord Damodar in the form of light and in the form of Damodarastakam. Damodarastakam means the eight verses pertaining to Lord Damodar. If you look up Damodar, Leela, you'll see cartoons. I recommend that you actually check out the cartoons. But, like, let me show you an example. Um, Well, this is a ghee lamp right here, right? And, you know, that candle over here, this is for a reason. I put that there for a reason, and I'll go into that in a minute. And, of course, Krishna says that even if you're financially poor, which I don't classify myself as poor or broke, we don't do that. But even if you're poor, you can still offer him fruit, something simple as fruit, water, or a leaf. For example, in this, I always keep a tulsi leaf. You see that leaf in there? I always keep a tulsi leaf in my drinking water. It's good therapeutically. It's good for therapeutics, like it removes fluoride from the water. And it also transcendentalizes your water, like you'll become a miracle person in no time. And then, of course, there's a picture of Sri Damoda in his pastime when he was about to get it put on him by his mother for being a naughty little boy. If you see his cartoons, you'll understand how Krishna is a naughty little boy. So, about that other candle gonna read something to you or maybe show something to you that was sent to me on my social networks and I sent it out to other people basically um yeah so now that I need it my phone is messing up runs out of storage you know what I'm saying I must be going through like some kind of mercury retrograde but anyway what happens is that today October 24th 2018 the Paul Bogle foundation is having a fire baptism the lighting of one million candles to commemorate the memory of 500 million Africans who died as a result of slavery that's October 24th 2018 for more info call 876-365-443 or 485- 9510. I read it exactly. So, um, you know, take it for what it's worth. It's at Morant Bay, St. Thomas at 6 p.m. If you cannot attend, we ask that you light a candle wherever you are at 6 p.m. Global management time is 5 and upload your video to Facebook. So, yeah, it's 6 p.m. today, no matter where you at on the earth. Please upload. I mean, um, yeah, take a picture of your candle or your video of your candle. Light a candle for the people who died as a result of slavery so the main purpose of this video was actually dealing with a subject that was brought up by Hermes Trismegistus I felt that when I saw the post about Hermes Trismegistus I felt like I had to do some justice to that post as if something needed to be clarified in that post you know what I'm saying who am I to be clarifying somebody as great as Hermes Trismegistus, I'm nobody to do that. However, when I'm called upon to do something, when I'm receiving that inspiration from the Spirit, I'm on it. I'm on it. So this is the post in question. It says, to speak without fear, human beings are above the gods of heaven, or at least they're equal. For the gods will never pass their celestial. I can't see it in Latin. For the gods will never pass their celestial boundaries and descend to earth, but humans may ascend to heaven. And what is more, they may do so without leaving the earth. That's by Her Hermes Trismegistus. First of all, Hermes Trismegistus is said to be Thoth from the ancient Egyptian deities. Thoth or Jehuti. That's the one with the um, ibis head, right? And he's said to be the inventor of the pen. He's the scribe of the gods, Thoth. First of all, it's to be understand, understood 
that demigods can take human form, okay? What we call gods and demigods are different from what you would know as the supreme creator or the supreme being. Demigods can even be creators. And so let me, let me just put it like this. The almighty supreme can manifest himself as a demigod. Doesn't mean he becomes a demigod. Krishna never becomes anything. He can expand himself as a demigod. Meaning, if there's no proper person to run your universe at the birth of your universe, then he can expand himself as a Lord Brahma and go about creating the universe. Or he can also, if you look in the Vedic literature and the ancient Kemetic literature, they will tell you that Surya or Ra, the sun god, is also another manifestation of the Supreme Almighty. So we, we find in the scriptures that Krishna can manifest himself in a capacity where he's running your universe or creating your universe, or he can even be the light of your universe, okay? So it's good to understand that demigods can never be the Almighty, but the Almighty can be a demigod. All right. First thing to understand, what are demigods? Demigods are living entities like yourself and myself. They live on different levels of existence. Some live on the upper planetary systems. And as such, their the materials of their body are more fine or should I say refined. They will still be composed of five elements. But of course, everything shifts according to your environment. And if you come from a watery environment, you would expect the being to have more water in their body. And if you come from a fire environment, you would expect for them to have more fire in their body. But for all intents and purposes, the demigods are made of the same five basic elements that you're made of. Akasha, which is space or ether. Fire, air, water, earth. Same five elements, all right? And in addition to those five elements... Demigods, like you and I, are also produced by three subtle elements, which is mind, intelligence, false ego. All three, okay? So you have eight elements composing your body. Demigods have eight elements composing their body. They live in a very, very high state, meaning it's like going, let's just say you're going from, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a good analogy, Third Avenue in the Bronx to Third Avenue in Manhattan. There's a big difference in environment, okay? Likewise, they live fantastic duration of lives. We're talking about Manvantars. We're talking about, we could do numbers on this, but now is not the time for numbers. I just want to express to you very clearly that demigods are very great beings of a celestial order. It is hard for them to give up their good life, their good sex, their good food, their good position. A lot of them got very, very, very good jobs. And as such, when Krishna was about to come to this planet Earth 5,000 years ago to perform his pastime, he put out word around the universe and told all of the demigods that if you want to be in a benevolent position, Come down to Earth, incarnate on the planet Earth in a town named Vrindavan and cooperate with me and my pastimes. Now, the controllers of galaxies and different planetary systems humbly and gladly bow down to Krishna so that they could receive the dust of his lotus feet on their crowned heads, right? So these guys got crowns, they're universal rulers, but still they want Krishna's dust on their heads. So many of the demigods did take birth. So yes, demigods can and will leave their celestial boundaries and descend to earth. It, it happens all of the time. Generally, it's your karma or your work will determine where you end up in the universe, both in this life and in your future lives. Your work, your karma determines that. Well, their work was to satisfy Krishna, so they manifested here on earth. In the previous video, I had mentioned because somebody sparked me to send some information about Kalki Avatar that there are beings on the earth who actually manifested here to wait for Lord Kalki Avatar so they could run the show with him after everything was cleaned up. So again, yes, these higher beings can leave their higher abodes and descend to earth. Now, humans ascending to heaven, and what is more, they may do so without leaving the earth. There's many ways to travel. In this universe, you can use a physical craft or you can use something called your Merkaba, which is your light body. Uh, the subtle body combined with the aura, it all leaves in the form of a spaceship that pretty much looks like a, um, 
Metatron's cube. If you want to imagine a Metatron's cube, imagine one square box, then take another square box, put it diagonally through that, and you'll get, I forgot the name of the shape, um, dodecahedron. It's called a dodecahedron. All right, so when you see a dodecahedron, you're actually seeing your internal spaceship. You can go to other planets right now. You can leave your body if you know how to do it. Or you can take your body with you, but this body is not designed for other planetary environments. So what will happen is you'll need a clunky spacesuit to go to those planets if you can even get past. Each planet has what you call like, um, you know, you know how Trump has the border? Like he got all of our military ready to kill those people. And listen, not for nothing, you know, Trump I already know who you are and how you are. And you already admitted that you're a nationalist and all of that. That's your business. I do understand that you and people who are like you hate other life forms and are afraid of other life forms. And if you could, you would eliminate your own selves, just like the white German shepherd. You know, there was a study done with white German shepherds and <laughs> the white German shepherds killed. They bred some white German shepherds. They killed all of the original German shepherds. Then after they killed all the original German shepherds, they killed all of themselves. This is the nature of things that lose their natural melanin as a result of either mutation or genetic manipulation so yeah i understand trump's nature that he would kill all of those people at the border if he could and again i'm not their creator i'm not their lord and if the lord desires for them to die there's nothing i could do to protect them but i will kindly ask donald trump and the citizens of the united states to do one thing before they slaughter those people at least those people that's been traveling from honduras and venezuela kindly Give them a glass of water, something clean to drink before you slaughter those people. You know, clean water, unlike what the citizens of the United States of America have available to them in cities like Newark, and South Bronx, South Jamaica, Queens, and most notoriously Flint, Michigan. So yeah, before you kill all of those traveling people, please just give them a drink of water. All right? So... Hermes Trismegistus claims that human beings are above the gods of heaven. I will clarify that. A devotee is superior to the demigods. If you're going in levels of rank, you got the creator, then you got his devotees, his pure devotees, then you have the demigods. Because a demigod can only bless you after you follow rules, regulations, rituals. For example... For Eshu, the guardian, the left hand of God, the divine trickster, the one whose color represents red and black, right? Eshu. His rituals are to be done generally on Mondays, and you clean your altar on Monday. Anything you're doing for Eshu, if you want him to reciprocate properly, then you do it on Monday according to the rules and regulations. Different demigods, like for example, if you want to make an offering to A. Lakshmi, which is the goddess A. Lakshmi now. She's dealing with, she's the opposite of Lakshmi. She's her twin sister, but she was born before Lakshmi. And so all of the goodness that Lakshmi brings to your life and to your household, to your family, a Lakshmi brings the opposite. Her day is Saturday. So these deities, these demigods and these asuras, all of these celestial beings, they have days by which you got to propitiate them. You got to follow the rules and the regulations. Like you got to feed a Lakshmi outside your front door and you got to give her what? An odd number of chilies and some lime or lemon. So you feed her all that sour stuff outside the door. She has no need to come inside your door. So every demigod. Now, if there's 33 million controllers in this universe, or some say 333 million, you won't have a lifetime to please Ogun and Oshun and Yimia and Oya and, and Vivasvan. And you don't have time to please... um um. Okay, Kama Devi and Kubera. You don't have time to give all of these offerings to these, these different demigods. You see? So these are rules and regulations according that was given in the Vedic times so that people could get their material desires fulfilled. <clears throat> Human beings are greater than demigods, especially devotees of the Lord. Because a devotee of the Lord does not depend on any time, place, or circumstance to give out blessings. We can bless you on the spot. 
Every day on my Facebook, I'm engaged in blessing people for their birthday so that they never have to take birth in this temporary world of crying and suffering again. I myself have no power to deliver people from life to death or death to life. No, I do have the people to power about that life to death thing. But, you know, I, I don't choose to exercise that in this life. It's only on the strength that Krishna does not allow his devotees or the devotees of his devotees to become liars. So he makes sure that all of our boons get fulfilled. All of our blessings, when we bless people, it gets fulfilled. So you can rest assured, everybody that's on my Facebook list is going back home to Godhead. I can't guarantee it'll be after this life, but you're going back. And I can only guarantee that on the strength of Krishna. I can't guarantee it on the strength of myself. I can't even guarantee that I'll be alive in five minutes. So I make no promises to no living entities, except, of course, when it comes to marriage. And if I make a promise in marriage, I intend to keep it unless circumstances change. You know, it's just real life. You know what I mean? Okay. So a devotee can bless you at any time, place, or circumstance. That's why Krishna always says that worshiping demigods is for the less intelligent. If you have the time scales on planet Earth, one of their days, and we're talking about 12 hours. We're not talking about 24 hours. We're talking about day from sunup to sundown on their planet. That's one considered one day. And that one daylight period for us is six months. So they did the math that 100 years of the demigods... Or like one month of demi, I think it's a hundred years. I gotta go read it again, but believe a hundred years for the demigods is thirty six thousand years on Earth, and that number thirty six thousand is important because when you take this number twelve that everything is based upon, and you divide, how does this work? You know what? Let me get back to y'all with the mathematical calculations again. I'm not the best mathematician, but I know that um. 12 times 36. Okay, okay, here's, here it goes. If you look at the hertz, 432 hertz is a sound vibration. If you divide 432 by 12, it comes out to an even 36. Again, that 36 number keeps coming across us. And 3 plus 6 is 9, right? So look out for 3s, 6s, and 9s in your life. Kali Yuga is 432,000 years. 4 plus 3 is 7. 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 2. That comes out to what? 9. 432 hertz comes out to 9. 432 hertz divided by 12. 1 plus 2 is 3. 4, 432 hertz divided by 12. Now, the musical standard for today is not 432 hertz. It's actually 440. But when you divide 440 by the perfect number 12, what do you get? You get 3.2. Six 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 seven. So it's not a perfect pure number. The music, the 440 hertz that they're playing, the music is encoded to 440 hertz. It's actually messing up your cells. If music was at the 432 hertz standard, then it would be harmonious with the universe. So yeah, demigods are, are powerful beings, respectable beings, but. I don't have time to bribe demigods, which is why I won't join anybody's religion. Because most religions want you to either bribe demigods or do business with the creator. All I want to do, I just chant a little and I share a little knowledge that's been inspired to me. So Hermes Trismegistus, with all respect, also known as Veda Vyas. Veda Vyas is the, the scribe again. He's a scribe, but he's in he's the literary literary incarnation of Krishna who performed this pastime. Also, something very interesting I noticed the other day. I was watching the Damodar Lila cartoon. And while I'm watching this thing about Damodar, when Krishna pulled down those trees and the two twins, Nalakuvera and Mani Griva, I believe that's their names. I can't yeah. Uh, Please help me out with that. When they came out the trees, I'm looking out. This is a cartoon I've seen many times before. And it just goes to show there's different levels of consciousness. We're not always at our highest level of consciousness because I've seen that a thousand times before. Even when I was chanting 16 rounds of Hare Krishna a day, I've seen that cartoon. And I didn't notice what I saw last night or the night before. Go look at that cartoon, Krishna's Damodar Leela. 
And when those guys come out the tree, look behind them. You know what you're going to see? You're going to see Mesoamerican pyramids. And you're also going to see Egyptian-style pyramids. And if you look at other movies from like when Lord Indra was attacking and stuff like that, you can see Tekkens or obelisks. So apparently, these ancient Indian people or these people connected to the ancient Indian civilization understood what our monuments in Kemet were all about, what they were used for, and why they were built. Even where we forgot, people of African diaspora, even though we have forgot, the people of India was in touch. They was in tune with those Tekkens and obelisks. I'm talking about the king of heaven, Indra, got Tekkens and obelisks, phallic symbols all over his kingdom. And we all know the king of heaven is Shango. Shango's main, mainly known for his penis. Let's just keep it 100. He's known for his penis. He's known as the man that outman, outmans all men, just like King Osiris. He's known to be a lover of many women. And he loves his wine. And he loves to dance. And he loves to dress nicely. Sounds like player player to me. Okay? And so, this king of heaven is always going to be associated with the phallic symbol and reproduction. Get used to it. There's so many connections that I want my people to keep studying. And if anybody has any questions about this video, feel free to drop your questions. Comment, like, rate. And I think I should set up a Patreon account. I think that's the next endeavor I'll probably look into is Patreon. So I could start earning some money and putting down some kind of trust fund so that I don't want my son to have a little good education in the future. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm, yeah, I think I should... um get into the money game without dedicating my life to becoming obsessive over money. Like, I'm not about being obsessive over money. I do want a comfortable life, however, and there's nothing wrong with that. So Hermes Trismegistus, if you would like to respond to this video, send me a message through SU, whatever universe you live in, galaxy, I'm sure to get through. Thoth, Jehuti, I'm open for your messages, and I'm here as an assistant in this day and time to await the coming of Lord Kalki so we could Hulk smash that ass. And with that said, I always like to share a very important mantra with you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you for viewing. Some Man Part 2 out.